Hey everyone and welcome to Just About Vegan 51 where we are eating our way to a healthier lifestyle. So welcome if you've been here before, welcome back. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like the content of this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and please, please, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below. So I've asked all the time about the variety of vegetables and fruits that I eat as a vegan. And since I'm encouraging everyone to have a healthier lifestyle, I thought that over the next few weeks, I will highlight different vegetables and fruits that I eat that you may not eat on a regular basis, maybe tried when you were younger, didn't care for them, or just plain have never seen them. So today we're going to talk about my first, and that is butternut squash, okay? If you have never tried butternut squash, uh, let me give you a few facts about it. It has 22 grams of carb, so if you count carbs, if you're concerned about carbs, this is considered a starchy vegetable. And so it has um, a substantial number of carbs. I would suggest if you're going to incorporate it into a meal that you replace your other starches that you might eat, rice, potatoes, pasta, and substitute the butternut squash for one of those. So 22 grams of carb, seven grams of fiber, just about 1.4 grams of uh, protein in a cup. And a cup is approximately 63 calories. It also has a wide variety of vitamins, a high level of vitamin A, vitamin C, it has a number of B vitamins, um, so it is a healthy, healthy choice. So, I've already shown you, this is what a whole butternut squash looks like. Now, it's very dense, so it feels very heavy. This one weighs about a pound and a half. So, I would think if you've got a family, you probably would want to get two um, at least two of these um, to cook for a family meal. But if you're like, oh, and the cost of this um, fresh whole was just under $2. It was, um, this weighed, like I said, about a pound and a half, and it was just under $2 for the whole squash. Now, if you're like me and you tend to be on uh, the let's get it done quick side, you can purchase already cut up butternut squash. Um, I got this at my local ShopRite, but I think most supermarkets now, you can get the butternut squash cut up. The difference in price is whole uh, butternut squash, about a pound and a half, cost less than two dollars and 20 ounces which seems to be the standard size cut up is five dollars so you would again these are cut up so if you were going to roast them um you would or make soup you would probably need two of these so you're talking about ten dollars so that is something to consider before you purchase now if you buy the whole and that certainly is your cheapest alternative. The only thing that you really must have is a good sharp knife. You can cut off the ends. You can then cut the squash lengthwise, open it, take the seeds out, put it in a pan. Uh, I put some liquid under it. If I have apple juice or apple cider, I happen to like that as my steaming, kind of steaming. Uh, liquid or braising liquid. I put that underneath, lay the squash open in the pan, season it, put it in 
350 oven and you just have to keep checking it. It'll probably take an hour or close um, for it to bake and, you know, be soft to the touch when you fork test it. And then it's done. So how can you season it? You can season it in any way that you would like. If you would like it to be um, sweet, you can add agave syrup, drizzle some on there, maple syrup, brown sugar. Uh, you can put nuts and raisins. If you have fresh pineapple or canned pineapple and you'd like to put in there, you can do that and give it kind of a fruity, sweeter flavor. If you'd like it savory, you can season it with whatever seasonings you like. Garlic powder, onion powder, curry powder. Um, so I use sometimes smoked paprika. Just any seasoning. I get, get uh, Costco's no salt seasoning uh, sprinkle and I use that. I have tons and tons of spices. So sometimes I just sprinkle. I like the Miss Dash Citrus Tropical, which is very hard to find in this area. But I found some recently. I sprinkle some of that on. Salt, if you're using salt, I would suggest that you wait until it's cooked and then sprinkle some table side. That's how I handle salt nowadays to keep from getting too much. Um, those of you that are salt free, you don't have to worry about that. So um, cutting this can be a little difficult. Again, I say you need a good sharp knife. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you go out and buy new knives, but if you can get them sharpened professionally, um, that's a good thing. Where I live here in New Jersey or a couple of towns over, in South Orange, uh, Kitchen a la Mode sharpens knives. And so I have taken my knives there and gotten them sharpened. So you can cut off the ends here. You can also, you don't have to split this lengthwise if you don't want to. You can cut it in rings, um, widthwise, and lay them in the pan the same way you would if you were baking it in half, it'll take less time, obviously, if because you have more surface um, being heated in the oven than you would if you just do the lengthwise half. But you can cook it that way. You can throw it on the grill. You can put it in your air fryer. If you use oil, I would spray some oil on it before I roasted it. <clears throat> If that's something that you use, if not, don't worry about it. Um, that's certainly up to you. I wouldn't drench it in oil, but spray it lightly and that will help give you a, a browner, crisper crust. You can mix it with other vegetables. Uh, I make a dish where I generally use acorn squash and apples, but you could certainly use butternut squash and apples. Um, baked together with nutmeg and cinnamon and I sprinkle some raisins in there. It's really delicious. Some people eat this for breakfast. Um, you can have it at any meal as a side dish um, and I think it's very versatile. It's healthy and I hope that you will try butternut squash if you've never cooked it. You may have eaten it but not cooked it yourself. Um, try to make a soup with it. It makes a nice, nice consistency to the soup. And I use vegetable stock and the butternut squash. I like to add a little curry powder to mine, some fresh garlic, and uh, it comes out. You can puree it if you have a blender. You can puree some of it. You can puree all of it so that it's a smoother consistency. You can use a potato masher if you don't have a blender, or you can just leave it the way it is. Just make sure you have enough liquid so that you have a real soup consistency. At any rate, so this is our first vegetable that we're talking about. Please, please, please consider trying butternut squash if you haven't tried it before. I think you'll be pleasantly pleased. Also, let me know what you think. If you try it, if you've never tried it before and you experiment, 
please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your experience. So again, thank you for visiting Just About Vegan 51. Please, 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 if you like the content of this video, give me a thumbs up. And please think about hitting the subscribe button, button to follow me and see what else I'm up to. So talk to you later.